Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that has now featured on the channel a couple of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys so far, a few different styles, and these guys are a very new addition to the Scottish beer scene, but they've had some really big praise, and based on the beers that I've tried so far, that is highly justified. Now, the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I haven't tried from them yet. It is a style, though, that I very much enjoy, one that's a little bit nostalgic for me, in fact, but it's one that you really just don't come across all that often. This is one of the very few Scottish brewed examples of this style that I can think of. So needless to say I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then we are going to head a little bit north of me here in Clipmanager up to Inverness, the Highland capital. We're going to go to the north of the city centre and we're going to have a look then at another beer from the wonderful Dog Falls Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Red Hook. It comes in at 4.8% ABV, and this one is an American Red Ale. So uh, yeah, this one just really caught my eye because of the style. So back in the day, the 5am Saint from Brew Dog was one of my beers that I really enjoyed. I would credit that one with having got me uh, quite interested in uh, the more hoppy American styles of beer because it had that little bit more malty character. But from there I discovered the Imperial Red Ales uh, and one of the ones that really sticks in my mind from then was when I was down in New Zealand. Uh, Eight Wired Brewing Company, First Blood, uh, you know, New Zealand hopped American style uh, red IPA. Beautiful, beautiful beer that one. I do hope I can get a bottle of that at some point and sit down on the channel and review it for you. But yeah, uh, Red Ales and Imperial Reds, Red IPAs and so on, these beers have a big space in my heart. So whenever I get the chance to have a look at one of these, I always jump on it. And that was the main reason behind uh, picking up a can of this one. And I also wanted to try more from Dog Falls because they're pretty damn solid. We've had a West Coast IPA from them, a Kulsh, and also a really kind of unusual barley wine. And they've all been great beers. So let's crack on with this one then and see what it has in store for us. The Red Hook, a 4.8% ABV American radio from Dog Falls Brewing Company in Inverness in the Scottish Highlands. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Dog Falls Brewing Company before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews. Do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the little search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that, you can check out the playlists of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Scottish playlist along with a number of other things. And you can, of course, check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well because there are some really interesting things on the channel these days. But yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you once again about Dog Falls Brewing Company. So as I've mentioned to you already, Dog Falls Brewing are based in Inverness in the Scottish Highlands and the company was founded back in 2019 by husband and wife team Robert and Louise Masson. So Robert comes from an engineering background and he worked in the oil industry over in Aberdeen for a number of years but he was a huge fan of mountain biking but suffered a really bad injury from this and it was the downtime from biking that really pushed him to explore his home brewing hobby a little bit more. But today he takes care of the brewing side of things while Louise takes care of the admin side of the business and I believe she also worked in the oil industry for a number of years and was involved in like project management and things like this so between them they have the ideal set of skills to start up their own brewery. Uh, but they released their first beers at the Inverness Farmers Market in the lead up to Christmas of 2019. But they were originally producing beer in their garage in Scannyport, which was just a very small kind of 25 square metre thing. But this allowed them to produce around 20,000 litres of beer per year. But in late 2022, they relocated to a new unit on Lotland Place to the north of Inverness city centre. And they brewed their first batch of beer there in the December. But the new site saw them add uh, three new 1,500 litre 
fermenters and they plan to produce between 1,000 and 1,500 litres of beer per week at the new facility and no doubt that will continue to expand as time goes on. But as of August 2023, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 15 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. And as I mentioned to you, they do have quite a few different styles there. So uh, yeah, if you get the chance uh, to try some beers from Dog Falls, uh, do jump on it because their beers are a little bit difficult to get outside of the Highland region. Uh, I found one of them in one of my local shops here in Stirling. That was the Kulsh. But uh, yeah, other than that, they are still at the moment very hard to get as of August 2023, but uh, hopefully that will change as uh, as things go on. But yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about uh, Dog Falls Brewing Company for the moment. Uh, the only other thing I would add to that is that they seem to be very well rounded. They've got nine core beers, from what I understand, all lo lots of different styles, and we will see about reviewing more of those on the channel as time goes on. But the Kulsh and the uh, West Coast IPAs, that I think it was a combination. It was called uh, Combination Kulsh and the uh, Resonate West Coast IP. Those are also members of the core range along with this one here. But uh, yeah, as I say, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. But yeah, let's go on then and have a little look at the beer itself. So once again, it is a 440 milliliter can. We'll just wipe this, the condensation off the can because it's been sweating in the heat here. There you can see the lovely Dog Falls Brewing Company symbol there. It's based on the shape of a hop flower, of course. You can see the river kind of going down there with the wee waterfall uh, kind of at the end and the big kind of pine trees there. I love the symbol for Dog Falls. Uh, brewing of course plain silver top of the can there and there you can see red hook american red ale at 4.8 percent abv it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back of the can as well of course but uh yeah it says on the back here six malts versus one hop but what a hop cascades classic pine and grapefruit in a perfect off-center balance with rich caramel biscuit and toffee sounds kind of wrong but it just flat out works uh, Dog Falls is a microbrewery in the heart of the Highlands, sustainably creating fresh, bold and distinctive beers. But, uh, yeah, should be quite nice. I'm pretty sure I bought this beer in uh, in Fort William, actually, because I found some of the Dog Falls stuff in a shop there and just went for it. I was like, yeah, really need to have a, a look at this and see what it's all about. But, yeah, Red Hook, American Red Ale, 4.8% ABV. Let's have a taste of this one, then, and see what it's all about. We'll get it out into the glass and have a look at it properly. This will be good. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Cascade as a hop is the kind of uh, the kind of godfather, if you like, of the American hops. Eight percent alpha acid. Um, it gives you uh, it gives you, as I say, a bit of grapefruit. It can give you a little bit of a kind of sultana figgy sort of thing, depending on your malt base as well. Um, but yeah, it's lovely. You can get these big floral and piney notes out of it too. Uh, America's very first higher alpha acid hop, of course. But in terms of uh, what you'd expect from an American radio, this beer looks pretty much bang on the money, to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, before the head disappears, we can see that this one has poured with about a one-third finger of a frothy, I would say kind of cream, very light beige-coloured head there. Uh, kind of medium sized bubbles sitting on the surface of the liquid and it does get a little bit foamier the further up the head that you go so you can just look at that there, it looks very very nice but you can see a lovely sort of rich uh, amber colour uh, to this beer uh, and it's got a little bit of a kind of natural haze to it one or two wee sediment particles just floating around in this one maybe I set the fridge a little bit too cold to be honest with you but yeah it's all natural of course so not too much to worry about there. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones just going up toward the bottom of the head there, but the head has incidentally faded away to just be a nice kind of thin uh, foamy layer. But yeah, um, lovely looking beer this one. In terms of the colour, I would say that it's quite a rich amber. It's not far away in terms of colour from this part of the the, uh, the label actually, which is quite nice. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. But any barrel ageing you do or any adjuncts you put into the beer will affect the colour as well. 
but uh, yeah, you don't often have to care about that with American radios or red IPAs or whatever. You're not going to often barrel age these things. Um, but yeah, other than that, I really don't think there's too much we need to say about the appearance of this beer. It looks pretty spot on. So um, yeah, let's have a little look at the aroma then and see what this beer is going to have in store for us. I'm really curious to smell this one. Yeah. That's a proper hit of nostalgia, actually. Just a proper, proper old school beer. Um, yeah, it really gives you just everything you would expect from the, the style, to be honest with you. You've got the little bit of maltiness in there, you've got the big piney resins, and then you've got the big oily fruits. When it comes to the red uh, IPAs and the radios and stuff like this, I think the more orangey leaning hops can do really well in these two. Cascade, of course, is a classic. A little bit of Chinook can work very well too. But yeah, the likes of you know Amarillo, Mosaic, Azaka, German Mandarina Bavaria, um, Pacifica from uh, New Zealand as well. What was the other one down there? Um, oh, I've forgotten the name of it now. There's another hop from sort of Australia and New Zealand that's very good for its orangey character as well. But the more orangey leaning hops can do a really good job in these um, these American reds too but this beer smells absolutely lovely so uh, yeah let's just try and break the aroma of this one down a little bit and describe what's happening um, so yeah for me the backbone of the the beer in here there's a lovely little bit of uh, just kind of fresh uh, there's a lovely little bit of a kind of fresh sort of wholemeal, brown bready bread crust in there. So that, for me, forms the backbone of the beer. There's a little touch of, uh, of woodiness in there. Um, yeah, so fresh wholemeal, brown bready bread crust, a little bit of woodiness. And then, yeah, above that, there's a little bit of a... There's a very slight, almost like rye bready character to this one. Um, so, yeah, almost just a little bit of a sweet kind of caramelised rye bread in there. Uh, there's a little bit of nuttiness as well, wholemeal brown bread coming out of this one for me too. But then above that, you start to get all the kind of brown sugary notes that they're talking about in there. Um, you do get like a sort of sweet, you get like a sweet oily caramel out of this one. There's a good little bit of, um, it's almost like a little bit fudgy in a sense too, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, you've got that oily caramelly note in there, a little bit of an almost fudgy character too. And then, yeah, that's really nice as I say. Yeah, straight up oily caramel cover on the booze of the beer, a little bit of McVitie's digestive biscuit in there, a little touch of toasty brown sugar as well. But yeah, wholemeal brown bread, um, yeah, a wholemeal brown bread in there, a little bit of a more kind of, um, I would say, yeah, just a little touch of an almost rye bready character too, but yeah, I really like how the aroma of this beer goes together, in fact, the way everything kind of pieces together in this one, I think, is, uh, is very, very nice, so it gets a big thumbs up from me. Um, yeah. I like the malty side of things in this one for sure. Very, yeah, just very much a, a nostalgia drop for me, I have to say. But yeah, um, let's have a little look at the hoppy side of things then. So the green component in this beer is, is pretty distinctive. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, if you know Cascade, um, you're getting all these elements out of it. So you do get a teeny little bit of earthiness, but there's a big oily floral kind of note out of this one for me. So kind of at the front of the nose, you're getting that big sort of, floral aromaticity. There is a wee touch of pine resin in there, but you've also got, um, you do also have a good little bit of, um, you do also have a good little bit of an oily kind of grassy character coming out of this beer too, which I think is great. So um, yeah, I really like that about this beer for sure. A big oily kind of grassy character coming out of this one. It has got a wee bit of zestiness to it as well, which is something you do want from the style. So yeah, little bit of earthiness, little touch of herbal character, wee bit of pine resin underneath, good little bit of uh, kind of floral aromaticity, then a sort of oily 
um, grassy character out of this one, which does have a wee bit of zestiness. Remember with beers like this though, there are three types of hoppings that you can use. There is early edition hopping, which takes place within the first hour of the wort boil. That gives you a good little bit of dankness in your aroma, but it also gives you like a lot of bitterness as well in the flavour. You've got late edition hopping within the last half hour of the wort boil. That gives you a little bit of uh, bitterness, but mainly kind of just like flavour and aroma. Um, and it will give you quite a bright green component in terms of aroma as well. And then dry hopping after the wort boil takes place is all about giving you more flavour and aroma in the beer. But that will give you quite a bright uh, aroma rather than a deeper, danker sort of thing. West Coast IPAs, of course, use all three types of hoppings. The more modern, uh, or the, the newer, I should say, New England IPAs uh, tend to use late edition and dry hopping. American Reds in the day always used a little bit of early edition hopping to give you that big deep resiny note which you do get out of this beer in swathes to be honest with you but yeah um aroma wise on the the fruity side of things for me yeah you do get that kind of distinctive grapefruity type note from the cascade but i also get quite a little bit of an almost orangey note if i was smelling this one blind i would think there was a bit of amarillo or mosaic or something like that in this one so yeah this um you do have, with the, the Cascade, you're getting the grapefruit, you're getting that sort of dainty sultana type note as well, um, which is quite common with this hop, I would say. So a little bit of a dainty sultana sort of thing. And then, um, yeah, you have all of these um, lovely sort of, I get a bit of orangey character out of it too, and almost a little touch of fig or something. But yeah, the aroma of this beer on the fruity side of things is absolutely lovely. I could sit and smell this all day, and it really is a sort of a nostalgia hook for me actually so yeah I think calling it red hook is uh, quite an interesting one because you know it will get you hooked on these uh, these red ales so yeah I like that but yeah as I always say just take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it because uh, you know the red ale is something you don't come across all that often these days but yeah let's just get the rest of this into the glass and we'll have a taste of it and see how we go. So yeah, this one is the Red Hook, a 4.8% American Red Ale from Dog Falls Brewing Company in Inverness in the Scottish Highlands. Let's get stuck in. Slanju, Skoll, cheers. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Um, yeah. Really nice beer, this one. It's actually um, a lot kind of smoother than I was thinking it was going to be. I thought it was going to have like a big kind of punchy bitterness to it. But it's actually really quite mellow. You get more bitterness out of it into the aftertaste, but it starts off almost like kind of slick and sweet it's a really nice done beer this a uh, really nicely done beer this one i should say english is getting terrible these days thinking in swedish too much but yeah the it's um it gets a big thumbs up from me this one um the one thing i would say about it is that it's only 4.8 percent abv you know i think this beer would be even better if you took it to the kind of six percent mark and just gave it that little bit more maltiness and things just give it that little bit more kind of oomph if you like um i mean i would on the basis of this one i would love to see them do you know an eight percent or so imperial red too because i think when you're going to have the more malty yeah the slightly more malty leaning styles like this uh unless you're going to go and go for like a, a german doppelbock or dunkel lager or you know something like this uh, Doppelbox kind of makes my point. If you think about a Dunkel versus a Doppelbock, they are very similar in their flavour profiles, but the, the Doppelbock is just a bit more indulgent than the Dunkel. That's the kind of feeling I get uh, from this beer. I can see why. If this one's going to be a core range beer, yeah, you want to go for the kind of lower ABV. But for me, the, the kind of flavour profile of this one, they've got the, the balance of the beer very nicely. I think it just needs taking up the scale. A little bit actually I think putting this one up to 6% or so could be a a good move but that was the same actually with their uh, the resonate that was only 4.7 or something like that and um, so yeah maybe this is the idea with their core range they're going to stick to the kind of four and a half ish uh, five percent mark 
Um, but yeah, this, as I say, um, they've shown with this beer they can do it. So it'd be nice to see them just take it up the scale a little bit and be a bit more bold with it. So maybe that will just come in time. We have to remember that dog falls are still kind of, uh, find, I don't know if it's right to say they're finding their feet, but yeah, they're still uh, kind of testing the waters and the market and stuff with their beer. But solid American radio gets a thumbs up from me. Um, let's do as we always do then with the beer and just break it down and describe the flavour a wee bit more in depth. So, the. This, the, the, if we go, the, this beer gives you everything you want in terms of the style. You've got the lovely oily maltiness in there, you get a nice little bit of bitter hop, and you've also got the oily, uh, fruity character coming out of it, which, as I say, is great. So, uh, middle third of your palate, then, you can feel the backbone of the beer is that lovely, uh, kind of brown bready sort of bread crust there. As you move further forward toward the, uh, as you move further forward toward the, um, Front of that middle third of your palate, you get a little touch of woodiness in there, which is uh, which is quite interesting. So you get a little touch of a kind of woody character in there, and then um, you get above that teeny little bit of cracker, but mainly a kind of denser sort of rye bready character. So yeah, you've got the the bread crust underneath, a more dense kind of rye bready character, and then above that you get the more the kind of lighter wholemeal brown bready character coming out of the beer which I think is great so yeah guess that gets a thumbs up for me too the way that the bready and bread crusty base in this beer goes together is really nice on the wholemeal kind of brown bready character uh, you do get a wee bit of nuttiness coming out of it too which is really nice but that's a very sort of mild flavour and it, as I say it comes out more the further into the aftertaste you go So yeah, above the whole meal uh, brown bready character, you start to get the brown sugars. So above that kind of brown bready layer, there's like a very light sort of, very lightly kind of toasted, uh, very very lightly toasted brown sugary layer. A little bit of a drier layer, but then above that you get the nice kind of, uh, you get a little bit of the more um, oily. Uh, brown sugar coming out of this one so in the base it does have a little bit of a very slightly leathery character which is usually characteristic of a, a longer wort boil but in the case of an IPA that's you're not really going to do that to be honest with you but um, yeah you get a very slightly leathery brown sugar layer then above that you get the more oily um, caramelly notes and then in the dead center of your palate you do get a teeny you just get a more concentrated brown sugar and of course that's because of the presence of the alcohol but at 4.8% ABV you're not getting the intensity of brown sugary flavour in this beer that you will get from some others that are toward the 6% mark but this is a red ale it's not a red IPA that's the other distinction we have to make with this one so yeah But the more you drink of it, the kind of sweeter um, the malty side of the beer becomes. And I, I do like that. Um, the other thing is that on top of the kind of brown sugary characteristics, you get a little bit more of a, you do get a little touch of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of note out of the beer, which uh, is really nice as well. Um, yeah, I think that is uh, it's really nice how that pieces together actually. Um, I think that's everything we really need to say about that middle third of the palate, to be honest with you. So let's move on to the back third of the palate then. But do remember the general trend of things with your palate, that sweeter flavours come out further forward and more dry and bitter flavours come out further back. Uh, but yeah, in the back third of your palate, you'll get similar flavours. Uh, you'll get similar flavours on the back third of your palate to the middle third of your palate. But the way... Um, yeah, the, on that back third of your palate... You have the uh, the flavors just come out with different intensities. So yeah, that border region between middle 
and back for you pal. You get a nice little bit of bready build up in there. There's a wee bit of a kind of wholemeal um, kind of rye bready base to it, but you get a little bit more of a white bready character further up there actually. But yeah, the base of that back 30 palette, you've got the bread crust in there, which does feel a little bit lighter and more dry and slightly bitter almost. Then above that, you get a bit of cracker. There's like a little bit of an almost Jacob's cream cracker there. Then you get a sort of rye bready layer, and then you get a more kind of wholemeal brown bready layer above that. And these two bready layers are uh, just lighter and more airy than they are in the, uh, in the middle 30 palette, that's for sure. But yeah, above everything else on that back 30 palette, like um, above the malty side of things, sorry, you get a little bit of the drier brown sugar just kind of creeping over the top. And then you get that nice um, yeasty character coming out of this one. So the yeasty character in this beer is like a more dense, uh, sweeter, wholemeal brown bready character. It's kind of like it's wrapped in a little bit of, um, it is almost like it's wrapped in a little bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing. So yeah, the way that that goes together is um, is really quite nice as well. But then above, uh, around that you do get a little bit of more woody, kind of grainy character from the yeasty side of things. But yeah, the yeasty character sits above everything else on the back third of the palate. So you can definitely say that the flavour on the back third of your palate is taller then as you come further forward into the middle third of your palate, it just kind of condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. And yeah, the way that that goes together is really, really quite nice. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything we need to say about the malty and yeasty side of the beer. So let's go on to the hoppy side of things then. So, back corners of the palate. Green component time, basically. The edges of the tongue. So yeah, in the back corners of the palate you do get a nice little bit of earthiness there. As you move further forward there's a little bit of herbal character and as you push further forward along the sides of your tongue there you do get a little bit of pine resin, kind of, uh, you do get a little bit of a pine resin kind of underneath that and you get a nice kind of oily, you do get a nice sort of oily uh, but slightly spicy floral aromaticity as you reach the front corners of the palate but round the front curve of the tongue you get a little bit of a lighter grassy sort of thing out of this one and it's it's quite an oily and sort of wet leafy grassy kind of thing you know like freshly cut grass that's what you get but yeah the piney rays and the sort of floral notes linger there and they become a bit more prominent the further into the aftertaste that you go but yeah on the front third of your palate then the fruity side of the beer let's have a wee look at that the border region between front third and middle third of your palate you get a nice little bit of kind of bready build up in there um, so yeah, lovely little bit of bready build up in there, wholemeal brown bread underneath and a white bread on top and then the base of that, um, yeah, the base of that front third of your palate, you've got a little bit more of a kind of, um, as I say, you've got a little bit more of a kind of wholemeal uh, brown bready character there, you've got the bread crust, bit of cracker, the wholemeal brown bread, the bit of white bread and then you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters come out and just roll their way out of the beer. So, uh, yeah, the way that that goes together is quite nice. So, um, yeah, the oily bubble where the fruity esters roll their way out of the beer then. At the back of that front third of your palate, you do get a little bit of a more kind of pungent uh, grapefruit type flavour there, so you can feel that. And then as you move further forward, there's a little bit more, yeah, as you move further forward from that, you definitely get a little bit more of a, um, yeah, you get a little bit more of a kind of sultana type note to this one, you know, the dry white green grapes, so definitely a wee bit of sultana there. And as you move further forward into the middle third of your palate, it gets a little bit more oily and datey and a little bit peary. And then you get a wee touch of like a slightly figgy note in the beer too. But yeah, for me, mainly grapefruity, uh, this one. But peary, yeah, a little bit of pear, a little bit of date, a little bit of sultana. These are all things that I've found you can get from uh, from Cascade over the years. But um, yeah, really nicely done. Definitely very nicely done, this one, I have to say. 
Um, on the uh, yeah, on the fruity, uh, on the mouthfeel side of things, then I think we can look at the mouthfeel just to round off this beer. So yeah, for me, mouthfeel wise, this beer, it's mid-bodied, carbonation is very, very smooth, it does have a nice kind of slick oiliness to it, I would say as well, which is what you want from a red ale or a red IP or whatever. So yeah, it does have a little bit of cleanliness to it though, and as I've often said in Scottish reviews, we're very proud of our tap water in Scotland, and the quality of the water in this beer is, is quite evident when you taste the thing. But yeah, in terms of the IBUs of this beer, I think we're talking, I think we have to be talking about 60-ish IBUs for this beer, maybe a little bit north of that, because yeah, you do have that kind of pine resin and floral character there, which lingers into the aftertaste. But yeah, the way that everything uh, pieces together, uh, from the, in that regard, I think, is, uh, is really nice as well. But yeah, on the, um, yeah, on the malty side of things, you get a little bit of dryness underneath, a bit of smoothness in the middle and a wee bit of sweetness on top of that. Then yeah, you do get a really nice kind of oily, um, fruity character coming out of the beer too. So um, yeah, uh, the fruity character in this one is quite sweet, but it does have a wee bit of that kind of zestiness from the grapefruit in the Cascade too. So yeah, really interesting on this beer, really quite slick and oily with just a little bit of bitterness out of it the further you go into the aftertaste. But as I say, I really like how this beer goes together, and I think it's a thumbs up from me. So, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. Um, this was the Red Hook and American Radio. Really nicely balanced and just drinkable beer, this. But I think this could be even better if it's just taken up a little bit to, say, 6% or something and made into, like, a red IPA, because they have got the malt base and the hop balance in this really nice. Just make it that little bit bolder. I would say. But uh, yeah, another very, very solid beer from Dog Falls Brewing. And I certainly look forward to seeing how these guys progress as time goes on. But yeah, let's leave it there. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from uh, Dog Falls Brewing as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the near future. We need to try a lager and a dark beer from them next, I think. So we'll keep our eyes peeled for those. But in the meantime, check out my social media, check out their social media, and I'll see you guys again in another review. Do give me some radio uh, recommendations in the, in the comment section below as well. Slanger, Skull, and cheers.